People say they don't believe anything that comes out of a politician's mouth. So why would you argue over the speech of a politician? Why don't we do that? We do that all the time. We're programmed that way. We're programmed to say one thing, but to do another thing. You know what? My sincere prayer is that uh, because sometimes I have to admit to you, I pray with great aggravation, but with great hope that um, the scales will be pulled off of people's eyes, that they'll actually be able to see. But most importantly, that the blind will not follow the blind anymore, but will seek to see through Christ Jesus. That's my greatest prayer. And that's also why I'm not really moved. Nothing in this world moves me except what is done to the righteous. Those people who really try to follow Christ, but they're so burdened and um, sent down the wrong lanes by these disinformation agents, which will set up a reality. They built reality you live in, by the way. This is a built reality. Everything is built. Everything is calculated. Everything is. Do you really think people choose a president? Do people really believe that? I'm sorry, guys. I can tell you right now, I know for a fact that dirty things go on. Nobody will ever talk about it because then you'll really die. They just put you out of the picture. But there's some things that happen that were way too trusting. And instead of our everything going towards men and women, we ought to place all of our trust in the Most High. It needs to be retracted from everybody else. Leave everybody else free to be who they are. But when it comes to your dependency, make sure you depend upon Christ, not these other things, because people are going in circles. They get free back into bondage. They get free back into bondage. They get free back into bondage. And how many more times are we going to do this? We know, we know for a fact that we can act one way in front of people, but when we get home, we're totally different people. Many of you, you can talk to your friends, you can fellowship here, but when you get back home, you may not be the same person. And we're trying to break that cycle in Jesus' name, but we cannot break that cycle if certain things are not brought forward in truth. All things must be broken in an atmosphere of truth because these negative entities, they will always wait in the darkness, right? If we're putting on a show to one another, don't expect to get free. Don't do that. Don't expect to get free. If you're trying to act like everything is okay, when in truth it's not, don't expect to be free. It does not work that way. But when you can boldly step up and say, you know what? By human standards, my life is a miserable mess because of me. When you realize that, not blaming anybody else, but knowing that you were a partaker of certain things, right? When that happens, now you're bold enough to receive a blessing from the Lord and not reject it. I will submit to you now that if you carefully examine your own life, the Lord has set you free. But because you believed in worldly things, you pushed it away. I know I did that a few times in my life upon close examination. The Lord will send you freedom, but we push it away. We tend to choose bondage a lot, don't we? How many times have you let something come into your life, but it was bondage? It ended up enslaving you. How many times have you done that? I know I did that a few times. Thinking it's going to be good, but it ends up bad. Now, if something ends up enslaving you, but you thought it was going to be good, that means you believed in a lie. You believed in something that was not real. It was untrue. And it's time to break that because with Christ, you do not have to live your life that way. You don't have to fall for anything. You have an ability through Christ to see through all situations. Oh, by the way, I'm not here to accommodate flesh. I'm not. If I'm against my own flesh, I'm certainly not going to be with yours. And the Spirit's not with anybody's flesh. It is, in fact, against flesh. That's why the Spirit and the flesh do war against one another. So just keep that in mind. If you get irritated or aggravated or it seems like, you know, there's no break coming from it. What if you knew you had a bunch of children and you knew for a fact the island you were on was burning up? It already started on the opposite side. Now, the children can't smell the smoke or anything, and they want to go playing. You're trying to get them prepared to follow instructions so you can lead them away from the fire onto the boat to get off the island. And the boat's not here yet, so when the boat comes, you need them to pay attention, not be distracted, get on the boat, and get off the island. So what you start doing is you start training them to follow your directions. Now, the fire's still blazing on the other side. They can't see or anything. But they tell you, we don't want to learn this. We want to go play. It's a nice day. Nothing's going to happen. Look, it's sunshine. They'll do it all the time. They're not going to listen. So what do you have to do? You have to utilize every skill set the Lord gave you. You have to have all the patience in the world. Because the end task is to get the children on the boat and not lose one of them. They're not going to listen. That takes your perseverance. That means you have to be committed to hear that word no. That means you have to be ready for the opposition and continue on your task of 
preparing those children. Because one day those flames are going to reach over the peak of the mountain, come right down into the valley, and start burning everything up. By that time, the boat will be there, and you're going to have to get them on the boat. If they are distracted, if they get too frightened, they're going to run away, hide, and die. It's too many children for you to go get them one by one. They're going to have to follow you on the boat. In order for that to happen, you're going to have to reach them where they are. Never expect them to be where you are. You're going to have to reach them where they are. You know, the task of the gospel is the same thing. Never to go above somebody's head. Meet them where they are. Talk to them with what they can understand. Have patience with them. If they can't take it right now, so be it. Come back another day. But never give up. We have to really cultivate that type of attitude. In this time that we're living in. Or you're going to have an incomplete work. And that's going to be tragic. There are no shortcuts. It will require everything you are to reach a person. Have you ever asked the Lord, Lord, what does it require for me to reach this person or that person? His answer is everything. It takes everything of you. It takes more than what you are. And it's designed that way. Because the righteous do not depend upon themselves, but they rely upon the Lord. The righteous exhaust everything they are by themselves, but their reliance is upon the Lord. Oh, key ending here. That can only be done by faith. You have to have a real belief not to give up on someone. And I'll tell you something. I have a real belief. I know trouble is coming. I know people are not going to listen. I said this when COT first began. That people are not going to listen to everything. But that time is coming anyway. And it's going to catch a great many off guard. They're going to be off guard. They're going to be ill-prepared. I will be prepared. Prepared to do whatever is necessary. To reach them till the last moment of my life. I'm not looking for a vacation because I'm not looking at the world and how the world operates. They have programmed people to work hard for a few hours and then relax. I broke that program. I don't do that. I do most things by an unction. And the Lord is the strength. If he gives you a task, he will do you just like the angels. How many of you know when God sends an angel to do something? Did you not know if God did not send the angel, the angel would not be able to do a thing? Do you know that? Let me give you a small course in something. How God sends anything. When God dispatches an angel, first of all, when he gives the command, the command implies that the angel must have comprehension of what the Lord is saying. That's number one. So wisdom comes. Number two, the angel must be able to complete the task the Lord has given them. So he grants that angel the strength to accomplish the mission. That's number two. Regardless of what the angel faces, he has already set up a support system that he will break through every barrier to deliver whatever word the Lord gave. Him. That's number three. The angel never thinks of himself or is too tired or not because he's strengthened by the Lord with the Lord's wisdom and the Lord's way. And he follows the Lord's path. So essentially, the Lord enables you when he sends you. He will never send you and not enable you. Now, whatever that enablement requires you're going to have when he sends you but if he does not send you you're not going to be enabled if he does not send you you're not going to have the wisdom you're going to try to bite off more than you can chew and it's not going to happen too well for you but when you're sent nothing can stop you you know that was also spoken in the book of acts when one of the jews said listen this be of god and you tore and you try to uh, persecute these men you're going to be persecuting the one that sent them which is the most high and in that day you will be no more see when god sends you and if anybody persecutes you they're really persecuting the authority that sent you and they will pay for it. do you understand that so that gets rid of fear you have to remember why you're walking forward jesus died on the cross to save us of our sins yes but how many of you want to really be children of the kingdom if you want to be children of the kingdom then you're concerned about the gospel that's where your concern is you're concerned about people knowing who jesus christ really is for themselves you're concerned about the word of god never being tainted you have concerns and you will handle those concerns not in your way not ever because you may mess it up see the lord does a delicate operation doesn't he you don't want to get in the way to start messing things up you want to compliment the work that's already in progress the lord already said that we have entered into other men's labors we're standing on a foundation somebody else built a long time ago as the lord commanded them so he commands us and within your spirits it's a no quit attitude that's why you're really here and you guys know it now it has to be directed in righteousness and you can only find that through the lord's word you cannot find that anywhere else and the hardest part is coming up too for all of you this is the part that very few people will accomplish you ready the time is coming when you will have to abandon all that is not your lord that time is soon coming 
That means your knowledge base. That means those things you trust in. That means your comfort and everything else. A time is coming where you will have to abandon everything that is not the Lord. This has been part of the Father's process from the beginning all the way to the end. He is a God. He changes not. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. These things are coming. Now, let me ask you this. In all truth, are you really ready? I asked that question one time, dealing with combat, because it was told to me the same way somebody asked me when I first went to combat. They said, are you ready? I said, yeah. He said, no, you're not. I just kind of looked at him. We get into combat, start fighting. In the middle of a gunfight, he looks at me. Were you ready for this? I said, no. He said, I thought so. He was calm, cool, and collective. I was not. I was beside myself. After what he told me, he said, listen to me. You can always prepare, but you will never be ready. When you prepare, do your best in the hopes to be ready. Because as soon as the conflict comes, all too often people find they're not ready. But you can prepare. And he said that the mindset behind that is this. If you deceive yourself into believing that you're truly ready, the chances of your survival are slim to none. The chances of you completing the mission are slim to none. Because you're going to have too much false pride within yourself, too much trust within yourself. But if you prepare for everything, knowing that you're not ready, you're going to be looking for everything and you will adapt to everything thrown at you. And you'll likely walk out having completed the mission. You know, that same thing is true in life. You can be prepared. But you will not be ready. Don't deceive yourselves into believing that you are ready for anything that comes because you are not. You can prepare for it. But trust in the Lord's guidance in that time when anything happens so that you can be adaptable so that you can move based upon the word of the Lord. Because when everybody who says they're ready, they have a set plan. And when that plan is blocked and it blows up right in front of their face, they have nothing else. Don't do that to yourselves. Be prepared by being mobile. Be prepared by expecting everything. Already have commitment in your heart to go forward no matter what. Realize that it could cost you your life. You can be prepared to go forward. That's a good mindset to have, but don't deceive yourselves thinking that you're ready. The Lord gave us the steps. We don't even follow them. And if you ask, what has been in the way of me obtaining what I want? Well, number one, the Bible says, seek you first, the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Let me tell you what happens when you do that. When you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, your heart changes. To seek the kingdom of God means you're seeking the lifestyle of a king, the ways of citizenship of the most high, of his kingdom which is not like these earthly kingdoms, you begin to see great contrasts between the kingdom of God and this world. And when you start seeking it, that means seek it to be in it. You begin to abandon all the ways of men. You navigate life differently. Then you start paying attention to what the Lord was truly saying, and it becomes your pleasure to obey him. It does not become a task to obey the Lord. If to obey the Lord is a task, then your heart's in the wrong spot. But if your obedience is is a desire fulfilled, you're on the right track. When you seek the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, you don't desire the same things anymore. You're no longer blind, but you see. Then when you ask for something, it certainly will not be the same thing you requested prior to finding his righteousness and finding the kingdom. You see how that works? Those who seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, their desires change. They're not going to ask for the same things. They don't like vain things. They see it. They see how it can destroy people. It's almost like when you're seeking God's righteousness, you begin to see things like they're deadly drugs. And to partake of those deadly drugs kills a person. You begin to see that where nobody else can. And when you begin to see that, you step away from it. You yourselves will not, no longer do it. You won't partake of it. And then your desire to have fun, to go out to a bar and drink and all that's gone. It's gone because it becomes a nothingness in your life. You begin to work for a cause. You become purposed behind everything you do and that purpose is bound in the kingdom of God. That's the person walking in almost full compliance. And then everything they request will never be withheld from them. See how that works? But most people pray for things that will increase them, that will give them comfort. And that's how you know that person has not been seeking the righteousness of Christ for the kingdom of God. Because the Lord does not grant prayers of vanity. We should all know that. A vain thing is something you can consume upon yourself. In fact, it's written, if you ask and don't receive, it's because you asked amiss to consume it upon your lusts. You asked in error. You requested something that you can consume upon your lust or upon what you desire. You did not ask for something that would increase the kingdom. You did not ask for something that would increase your brother or sister. See, if you're walking in this world and you think something's going to work for somebody else, you're still walking in your own wisdom. And you don't have to walk like that. There's a whole new wisdom set just for you. If you have to seek his kingdom and his righteousness first, and then all those things will not be lacking. I'm telling you this because for many years, I've been on both sides of the fence. I've had everything and I was still lacking. And I've had nothing and I was lacking. But when I found the word of God, it is a richness and wisdom 
that is fulfilling whether you have or don't have. What you have and what you don't have no longer matters. Imagine having that mindset that even if, if, if somebody came around you, the Lord would send provision through you to provide to them. That you would never be lacking in anything. Yet to the average person, you would end up, you know, you just look strange. Your situation would look strange. But you would have joy. You would have peace, soberness of mind, zero addictions. You'd be free from all this stuff the world throws at you. How many of you would love that? See, some of you are coming to the point and you're, you've learned something about having too much and you don't want too much anymore because you know what it does and it never gave you the peace of mind that you desired you desire something far more than man can ever give some of you are just like that and you have found out that these things man gives they only add obstacles in your way we live in the last hours and everything is changing but the only hiccup the only clause is this if you think things are slow right now i can promise you with everything i am very soon we're not talking about years you're gonna look back on this very day and say i wish it was just like that day again for those of you who keep walking in the same footsteps over and over again because things are going to speed up so much you're going to find yourself losing mental control of tracking anything you're going to be overwhelmed but the lord gave a promise to his own he would give them his peace the son of the living god would grant you his peace how many of you would like to have the peace of the lord that's a promise it's not some maybe or if that's a promise as often as you read start applying those small things to your life you don't have to apply everything learn to apply those things to your life and live by them that they become natural when somebody is 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 face face with me and they say something off or they try to argue or something like that do you not know it's not even an issue now i let them get their peace out i can hear every word they say and i'm not even moved with anger but then by doing so i can hear underneath their speech that always captures their attention if somebody yells at me i can hear what they're actually saying beneath their speech which means when you line yourself up with the word of god the discerner of the thoughts of man will be with you and while a person's person's yelling the lord will communicate to you the real problem even by knowing it i never repeat it but it gives me an ability to reach the person the more the lord shows me of a person especially when it's awful it allows me to really speak to that person because i'm not one to judge anybody the lord can show me anything about anybody but because sin is sin and he saved me from sin i will never ever judge them what i will do is i'll be empowered to reach them once you know a person and what they have done and the lord will show those he'll show you a person in their totality if you'll still love them and not judge them if you are judging people because of what they did expect to be blind concerning that for the rest of your life he will not give you sight beyond sight if all you're going to do is condemn a person for what they did it takes a forgiving heart you have to be a person of forgiveness and then your eyes will be wide open you will start to hear the hearts of those you communicate with you'll see right through their speech into the truth but because you don't judge you'll never do what satan does satan is the accuser of the brethren so he waits to hear things he can accuse you by but the lord stands ready to forgive see how that works satan's emissaries they condemn they call out false the fault finders tail bearers and all this stuff but what does the lord do he knows exactly what all of us did and he stands at the door and he knocks he does not blurt out our business to everybody but what he does do is he says listen i know exactly what you did and that's exactly why i died so that you could be forgiven of all those rotten things that you did and be clean again and come home that's what he did isn't that awesome so if you had that same heart your eyes would be open I'm telling you right now, your eyes can be open. But be ready to add the scriptures to your life. And the season is right now. If you start, I'm telling you, listen, 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 listen. Align yourself because there's a renewal of strength. You won't be fatigued and tired. Have you found out yet that when you start relaxing, the aches and pains come? Have you found out that when you have nothing to do and you think you can sit down, the distress comes? Out of nowhere. Either distress, either it's aches and pains, a new health problem, something will always happen. If you want out of that, that you may focus upon those things of the Lord, then begin to apply his word to your life piece by piece by piece by piece by piece. Don't do it all at once, but learn to live in the word that you read. Nobody ever taught me that. And in fact, I used to hear about the glamorous part of the word of God, which makes you want the glamorous part. But not a soul gave the instruction. I hear statements like you need to be saved, but they never told nobody how to be saved. They never gave you the spiritual process of that, what was actually happening. These things should have been explained. 
it should have been a bit more thorough. But because men were living it up, trying to gain everything during that time, they missed quite a few things. I'm telling you, the anointing is always there for you. The spirit is always there for you. It's waiting on you. You're not going to wait on it. It waits on you. It waits on you to step into obedience. That it may come and be one with you. And once it's one with you, you'll understand everything I'm talking about in detail. 